All right, good afternoon. This is a little afternoon weather discussion here. Coming up on 4 o'clock as I record this, I want to start with the big view here of the southeast. It's pretty quiet as of now. Um, the best dynamics are not in play yet, which is why this line is fairly benign, fairly quiet. There's not a whole lot happening back here to the west. But over the next couple of hours, uh, I fully expect uh, there to be a pretty decent increase in activity, especially uh, over here. Um, in this part of the Mississippi Delta, all the way over to Jackson, up to Memphis. That'll be the first area that we see uh, storms really get going here uh, in the short term. So uh, again, for right now, things are pretty quiet um, at the moment, but we're going to be watching this very closely over the next several hours. So here is the latest uh, you know, watch warning map. Again, there are no active severe watches in place. We have some flash flood watches in place. And that is simply because of the more recent rains that we've had here. The good news about this system, if there is any good news at all, is uh, it's not a big rainmaker for us, but there will be the potential for severe weather as we know. So this is the SPC outlook for today. Now this hits different places at different times and we will walk through that, but this uh, orange area that you're seeing here on the map, this is the level three out of five, the enhanced risk area here. Um, this is gonna be the spot we focus on for the best chance of tornadoes, very strong straight line winds as well. With that said, we can have that essentially anywhere here today, but there are going to be spots that have a better probability, better potential, better parameters for that than others, especially as we go through the evening. So uh, we'll help walk you through that. All right, let's go right to um, our, well, let's show our temperatures first because this is another thing that's very telling. So we've got currently our, our warmest temperatures are a little bit closer to the front. So our front's right about here. And uh, we've got good, what we call warm air advection coming in from the Gulf. Now something inhibiting that over Northern Alabama right now is this wedge. So this is cooler air. This warm air is trying to overcome that. But you see the difference at 74 in Montgomery 79 in Meridian, 76 in Starkville. It's 10 degrees cooler in Birmingham. Right now, northern Alabama is relatively stable. We're seeing our most unstable air coming into southern and central Mississippi uh, at this time. And again, that will be you'll, that'll be a kind of a fueling factor for these storms as they move in. All right, let's jump into our uh, Future View product. Again, I'm going to try to just walk you through this manually. Um, this is starting at five o'clock. Again, I'm recording this just before four o'clock. So um, this is a look at that line as it moves into Mississippi. So something you're going to notice, first off, you've got a very prominent line here. Um, along a line like this, we call this a QLCS, Quasi-Linear Convective System. That's a fancy term for it is a strong line of thunderstorms. We've got a lot of wind energy in play here today. So whether we have instability or not, it doesn't play a huge role. Obviously, where there's instability, there's a better tornadic threat because you can get those rising updrafts and the rotation with the wind shear. But this is at 10 o'clock on this particular model. This is the HER, one of the short-term models. And uh, by about 10 o'clock, it's depicting a line from just west of Tupelo, back through Grenada, Winona, and then passing I-55 down towards Yazoo City, Jackson, and then eventually over to Natchez, Mississippi. So what can you expect here? Well, along this lead edge, you're going to have very strong winds. But something else that can happen within a QLCS that can be very tough to predict is the evolution of these bowing segments. So areas will see maybe a bow in the line. All right, These little eddies will form. And occasionally, you will get a spin up on certain spots of the line. They typically are not very long lived, but they're very hard to predict. And so that will be a going threat as we go through the evening. But at 10 o'clock, I would say our, our biggest threats could perhaps be um, back here in Mississippi. Once this line forms, it will move pretty quickly, but um, we'll have to watch this for timing changes. But um, as we move this forward even further, something else to notice is by about 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, we've now got the line, but also you're going to notice here these what we call discrete cells. Now this model is showing discrete cells. These are the ones that if they get out in front of the line have the best tendency to rotate. 
when we say discrete, that just means it's, it's on its own. It's by itself. It's not part of the main line. And, and with that, um, they're usually f not impeded at all by any other storm. So there's nothing to, to hinder the inflow to the storm itself. And those are the ones that, if that does come to fruition, um, would be worth watching uh, as we move forward. So um, let me see here. I'm just looking at some stuff off the screen. But uh, this will be something to watch. Not all the runs have showed this. Um, so that'll be worth you know keeping an eye on. Can these discrete cells form? Can we get um, these individual supercell types out ahead of it? And I think this would be most likely in our southwestern counties here in central Alabama. So, all right, I'll clear that off and we'll push this forward a little bit more. Um, now we're at about 2 a.m. Okay, so what do we see here? Now we've got an elongated line, not as sharp as it was before, and still showing a couple of these supercell type or discrete thunderstorms ahead of the main line uh, in places like Montgomery, um, Montgomery County, down further to the south here near uh, Monroeville, and coming into the Wiregrass area. So if those were to hold together, those are your bigger tornado threats. Within this line itself, I would say this is a straight line wind threat but as I said before, tornadoes cannot be ruled out of that setup. Move this ahead even further. So this is now at about five o'clock. And again, once this gets going, uh, it's gonna have some momentum. I'm gonna move through the state pretty quickly. This is at five o'clock on Sunday morning. So folks in the Wiregrass, you're gonna be waking up to um, probably a very intense line of uh, storms here. Again, the lead edge of this is gonna be a, a straight line wind threat, I believe. Um, the one thing that's good, and you're going to see this uh, in the data I pull up here in just a second, is we, we lose instability overnight. Instability is that fuel to get things moving vertically. Uh, the sun helps that out. Warm air helps that out. We, we naturally cool at night, so instability factors, parameters are going to be weakening. But there's so much wind energy with this system that in some instances we will be able to, to overcome that. So I think this is a straight line wind threat, but uh, can't rule out tornadoes here uh, when it moves through the, uh, the Dothan area early Sunday morning. I'll push this ahead even further to when it is basically out of here. And that's going to be about six or seven o'clock in the morning. It'll be clear of Alabama. The threat will be long gone uh, for central Alabama even sooner than that. So that is a look at the latest um, short term modeling. So what I've done here is um, basically overlaid um, the energy. So this is CAPE. Okay, what CAPE is, this is the instability values of available in the atmosphere. And um, we're going to be watching this carefully because the instability is something that's, that's very important to storm development and strengthening, but it's not the only factor. So let's, let's walk through this one first. Um, this again, I'm starting this at 5. So I've, what I've done is I've overlaid in kind of a 3D look the future radar here okay so that's going to appear aloft above but this is to show the instability parameters so we'll move this ahead to about the same time 10 o'clock okay as it's coming into say Winona to Jackson there's still going to be a decent pocket here of instability right ahead of this edge so in Mississippi what you're going to want to look for where we have the instability where we have these discrete supercells form these are going to be your biggest tornado threats, okay? Again, I mentioned back here in the line, that is certainly possible. Embedded within the line, you can get those. But where you have that overlap of good wind shear and you have that overlap of good instability, that's where you have things. If you can imagine, the air is going up vertically where you have good instability. And then you have the wind shear that's helping turn those updrafts. So you have things going up, and then the atmosphere, the wind profiles, cause those to rotate. And those supercells over in south central Mississippi will be worth watching as we head through the evening. So that's at about 10 o'clock. We'll move this forward now to about midnight, okay? So now you're in the clear if you live along, uh, you know, I-55 in Mississippi. This is coming into Starkville. Louisville, Tupelo, it's actually coming into West Alabama here, but uh, notice our instability is beginning to weaken. And that's what we expect here. Uh, there's not a ton of instability to begin with. The air aloft over Birmingham today is a bit warmer, and the warmer the air is aloft, the more stable the atmosphere is. If you think about it, if colder air is aloft, that allows parcels, warm parcels at the surface to rise freely and rise rapidly. 
and that's more energy. But with warmer air aloft, that kind of deters those updrafts and that vertical motion. So we don't expect there to be a ton of fueling from instability as this line moves through. But as I've said, the wind energy with this is very, uh, very good. Very strong wind profiles here. A good um, jet aloft at about 20,000 feet, you're going to have winds humming along. And uh, when you have a change in wind speed over height, that's, that's your wind shear, and that'll, that'll get these things going, especially in a squall line, in a QLCS, or in a Boeing segment. So here at uh, you know, 2 in the morning, where do we have our, our best instability? It's on the southern part of the state. So what we'll notice here as this evolves is we really lose out. There's, there's just no instability up here, and um, that's probably going to keep this more of a wind threat in the northern half of the state, at least at this point. Um, with perhaps an embedded tornado or two possible. Just, you can't ever rule that out. These, I've seen so many weird setups with these QLCS situations where the line, it bows out, it bows out, it bows out, and then you'll get a, a spin-up embedded within that line fairly quickly. And they'll go away quickly, too, um, a lot of times, but uh, that's just something that's very hard to predict, and the tornadoes don't always follow those atmospheric parameters as we set them forward. So move this head a little bit further now. Let's get to about 5 o'clock. Uh, in the morning. I'll clear out this telestration here. And now what we're left with is this little sliver here over uh, southeast Alabama. And this is again some decent instability. I mean it's unstable but that might be all we need at this point um, to, to keep these at, at a severe level. So if you're in the wiregrass Sunday morning pre-dawn up until about 6 a.m. I'd expect the, the weather to get a little bit bumpy as we move forward. I'm going to show one other product here. Um, this is something else we watch. Um, relative helicity. That's a fancy term for wind shear that is present. So what you're going to notice here is um, basically that likely, very likely, extremely likely. That, that's the winds being able to rotate. So here we are again at about 10 o'clock where I've started the other ones. We've already talked about instability here. We're going to have some decent instability across central Mississippi. But we're also going to have some really good wind profiles in here as well. Um, when you talk about stronger helicity values, that's stronger wind shear that's present. And so um, that's going to mean that these storms are going to have a lot of wind energy. Good potential for strong straight line winds and anything out here like these discrete cells I've talked about um, that not only have the instability that energy with them, but also this crossover in helicity or good wind shear is going to be something to watch. So we'll move this ahead and what you're going to notice is the helicity values never really drop off and that's why I've said much of this week I don't really think the instability is going to be a huge role. It's good that it's not contributing and that there's not a ton of it but any severe situation you can overcome a lack of instability with a really good uh, wind profile and uh, wind aloft is going to be very strong We'll have a uh, basically a jet streak aloft, and those winds moving really, really fast in the upper levels at about 20,000 feet. You think about it, all that air aloft is evacuating. Something has to replace that. So when that air aloft is being pushed ahead, the air below it has to move vertically. So there's that vertical motion, there's your wind shear, and why this is going to be a, a probably a long night in several instances here by about, uh, let's see, go to 5 o'clock. Now we're looking at, uh, again, the greatest wind energy is going to be on the northern edge of this line in Georgia. But but in Georgia, uh, I think it's going to be a lot more stable. It's going to be a tough, tougher to make these storms severe, have these storms maintain severe limits once they get into North Georgia because of that cool air wedge that is in place. So that will about uh, do it here for this uh, update. I'll try to get another one in here before things get going later on this evening. Uh, I'll just want to show the just the future view one more time to help you time it out here. So at, at about 10 o'clock, and this is subject to change. Once this line forms, there might be a time shift here. Um, but I'd say late this evening, Tupelo, Winona, Grenada, Jackson, about 10 o'clock. We'll push this ahead to about 1 a.m. Now Huntsville, uh, Jasper. Tuscaloosa, Demopolis, down towards Livingston, York, and, um, and again, we'll be watching these very closely, these supercells. This is just model data. This isn't the answer key, but we'll have to watch, and if those do form, that will be a uh, something that we will have to monitor closely for the best tornado threat. Uh, move this ahead even further. Let's go to about 3.30 in the morning. 
Now where is it? Well, it's, it's accelerating, and now it is moved through much of central Alabama. So once you get past this main line, none of this is of any level of severity. The, it's going to be a very short window at the lead edge of this where these storms are severe, and then they quickly, once you get past the lead edge, there, there's just nothing severe about the line. Um, it's going to be a very narrow corridor right at the front of this line that's severe. And, and this right here at 3 some in the morning, this looks like it's lost its um, structure, if you will. And uh, this may end up being sub-severe up here further north in Alabama. Um, but again, the, the strongest part of this will, will be the southern edge of the line moving forward. The uh, Wiregrass area, southeast Alabama, you know, be advised uh, four, five, six in the morning. That'll be moving through those locations. So um, to sum this up uh, quickly, I will pop up another product that we sometimes use here. And this is um, a look at the tornado probabilities, okay? So what does this mean? Well, when we talk about the probabilities of tornadoes, this is the probability that we see a tornado uh, within 25 miles of any given point on the map. So about a 10%. And that seems low, but that when you think about the odds of a tornado, that, that's, that's a pretty good bet that we're going to see tornadoes somewhere in this area outlined in yellow a bit less or so in this outline here. And one thing you'll notice is the instability values here is going to be the limiting factor. These storms can still pack a punch with that wind energy. But without things to move, you know, vertically in the in the atmosphere and get these rotating updrafts, you don't have as good of a chance of tornadoes. So the highest tornado threat is going to be over central Mississippi today and then southwest Alabama. And as this line moves further and further to the east, uh, that is going to um, eventually be primarily a wind threat. And winds can do just as much damage. I don't want to you know, mislead or, or make anyone think that um, you can have, uh, oh, it's straight line winds, no big deal. They could do a lot of damage too. Um, so it could be a long night. Um, we'll definitely have things uh, monitored here. If you live in central Alabama, we have our newscast at 6 here on 3340. Um, and we'll probably have continuing coverage into the evening as well. I'll try to get another one of these videos out when I can if it's not too busy. Everyone uh, stay safe. Have a great way to get alerts. There's all sorts of apps you can get. You can customize them to, to your location. I know our, our weather app 3340, you can have it follow you, a geolocation. And based off of where you're at, if you're driving around or if you're not at your home, it'll, it'll go off based off of, of where you are if there's a warning polygon in place. A lot of this won't be severe. We'll be okay. Uh, we'll make it through the night. Most people, you know, you're prepared. You know it's coming. You take action. You'll be okay. Uh, this will be a fast-moving line, so 30 rough minutes at your house, and then just a lot of rain. So we'll watch it closely for you. Everyone have a great evening. We'll see you next time.